I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! One, two, three, two! Baby! I, first of all, I want to say thank you for, for believing in what we felt the Lord lead us to do. Sassy! Let me be your online pastor. Let me open up the word. And they don't think I know a buttload of crap about the gospel, but I do. Stunley. Hey, guess what? Maybe you were praying. Say, God, I just want to know more about you. And here, boom, you get this inbox. And bang, there's my fat head. Check the pants. <laughs> oh, man, I'm pretty. I said, what the heck just happened? So anyways... Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Do the monkey with me! Come on! Stupid Johnny. Do it for Johnny! And I want to help you! There, play man. Here's Johnny! Yeah, whatever. I love Johnny Bravo. <laughs> I don't know why I love that that whole sequence I put together. I mean, that's just my artistic side. Um, I might take it off. I might not. Uh, I'll let. Of course, obviously, you'll know. Um, YouTube sent me a, uh, a an email saying that they were going to start tagging on some advertisements on these clips. Uh, so I agreed to it, but uh, we might have to take that off. I'm not sure. We'll just we'll just see where it goes. I'm not. You know, it's no biggie. Um, I'm ready to take this up the next level, though. You know, I would look at the views on how many people were seen, and the last video we did had about 29 views. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna. I, I didn't want to bombard everybody. I didn't want to just. I, I realized when I, you know, I was very excited about this. A lot of you were excited, so I was putting out two videos a week. And I know more or less, you know, that's kind of like what we would normally get if we're going to church on Sundays and Wednesdays. But they're at your convenience. Um, so I, I realized two weeks ago, I thought, you know, let's wait. Um, let me just let people catch up. So we kind of waited, you know, a couple weeks now, and I want you guys to catch up. But I started getting email uh, messages on Facebook saying, hey, what's up? Where's my sermon? Where's my sermon? So there are those that see these right away. And I'm thinking, you know what? Let's just do it. And at your convenience, you look at them. So I'm going to put them out, and it's at your convenience. You know, there's things that are in my heart that I want to share. These are things that, that I go through as well. And I know that God, when I read my word in the morning, these are the messages God gives me. And when we're locked together like this, pretty much uh, as we grow and go through things, we do it together. So there's going to be a lot of similarities. When you're successful, I'm going to have success. When you're going through it, you know, going through a tough time, I might be going through a tough time at the same time so that God can reveal to us ways to get through it at the same time. And we can actually have a conversation like this. You know, um, you know, we, we got a little busy. I'll, I'll, I was in Hollywood a few times. I uh, had some meetings with um, True TV, had some meetings with, um, with uh, well, so, uh, another project that's actually a uh, a pilot that I was uh, auditioning for for uh, TV land and I was pretty excited about that I don't know if I'm gonna get it I didn't really have the right look they needed um, but uh, you know we'll see where it goes you know I knew the guy when I walked in there I knew the guy that was uh, doing it. I'm like hey what's up so it's kind of cool to connect with someone so besides of whether I get the role or not it's a matter of just connecting with people and being an influence so it really worked out for our mission you know um, so, so that's where we're at, you know, and I wanted to share something before time uh, gets away on this. Um, I want to just talk a few, a few videos about how to hear from God. That's probably a believer's number one battle is how am I supposed to hear from God? So I'm going to tackle these just one at a time as, as, as the Lord leads. And, uh, um, one of the things I want to share with you this morning, it's in Revelations chapter one. And it starts with verse 9, and um, what, you know, Revelation is what I always think of that as the spooky book. That's, a, you know, the, the, the vision that John the Apostle had about all the forthcoming events that are going to happen at the end of the world. And uh, it's really, you know, you get a chance, read through that just to familiar yourself with it. Um, but there's a lot of interesting things in there that, uh, that are kind of show the future. And... Um, you know, I've, I've taught series on those before, and, and, you know, maybe we'll dab a little bit in, in and out of those. But, but what I really wanted to show you is that the Revelation is probably one of the greatest books in the Scripture because it's a huge revelation. Now, we all want to have 
that kind of experience with God, a vision from God. As a matter of fact, I've, I had this vision that God gave me on November 2nd, 2008. That three-day vision is what has me here today in Hollywood trying to do what I'm supposed to be doing. And one of these days, maybe when we're together in person, I'll share with you that vision. But right now, uh, I've been really instructed by the Lord to keep it to myself and, and only share in person so it's not on you know YouTube. Um, but John, in Revelations 1, verse 9, he had this revelation. And I want to kind of show you the circumstances so that you can understand how what what we have to be sometimes to hear from God. Now this is what he says. First uh, verse nine says, "I John, your brother and companion in suffering, and in kingdom and in patient endurance, that our that our that our, our <laughs> let me read that again. I John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus." On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Now, let me describe to you what he's talking about. He's saying, I'm, I'm your brother. In other words, we're the same. I'm your brother. He's not above us. He's not below us. The apostles are equal with us in humanity. We're the same. He says, I, your brother, and your companion in suffering. He's relating to us because he's saying, look, I'm suffering too. I've suffered hardships. He was on an island. Now, right away, when we think of island, we think of Hawaii or Tahiti or Fiji. What he is referring to is the island of Patmos, which was a Roman prison island, kind of like Alcatraz. But they had hard labor and they had hardships. They had beatings and so on. And he was there for being a preacher of the gospel he's trying to plant churches and they threw him in prison so he's there you know in an abusive situation and he actually finds himself in a cave he goes to a cave on this prison island just to probably get away from it all and it's there in, in this hardship that he actually hears from God and he describes that. He says, On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Now, that's the point I want to make, is that sometimes we have to be in the worst situation, the worst conditions, the most depressing times to actually stop and say, God, I need to hear from you. To actually recognize, like, Lord, I, I'm in this position of fail right now, and I, I need to hear from you. To be in a hardship, to be what, where you feel alone on an island, those events happen, and, and sometimes they happen for a reason. And if you find yourself there, I'm telling you right now, God is about to reveal to you a vision, a direction, a, a, a thought, something for you to take yourself out of there and go to the next level of life. But you have to recognize, don't don't find yourself like stuck in the mud of depression saying, oh, boo-hoo, me. I'm telling you, wake up. God is about to speak to you and say, look, I want to share something with you that will change the world. you got to grasp that, though. It might change your world, change your career, give you a decision to make. It might make you help you make that decision for your marriage or for your, your, your education or something. But you might be in the worst position in the world right now. And God is saying, that's exactly where I want you to be. Now, that's tough to understand, but you know what? I'm just looking at what the Bible says. John was on a prison island by himself in a cave, and then God spoke to him. So God wants to, God wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to me. And it's in these hardships that, he's, that, that we're able to just stop and listen. So I want to challenge you. Stop and listen. You might be in the worst situation right now economically or, or family-wise. But I want to challenge you, just stop and listen. Listen to what God is telling you right now. Psalms 143, I want you to say this prayer with me. Say, say it with me. If you're by yourself, say it with me. If you're in front of a lot of people, say it. If you got the guts, say it. If not, wait till later. But this is what David said in, in, the, in the time of depression. David wrote this. He said this. Say it with me. Say, Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. Lord, bless those that are hearing this. Be with them, Lord God. Reveal to them. Give them visions, direction, ideas. 
In your name, Jesus.